Okay, so now for the consultation. What are we going to do for you, sir? We're going to do the fade. Okay. We're going to have like a half inch on top and fade it down to like an eighth. Okay. You got your lines. Okay. I like that. That was easy. That was that, that was that was easy. That was easy. Yeah. <laughs> so 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 just like last time then. Pretty much. <laughs> so what we're gonna do since he was since he his hair is freshly shampooed, we're just gonna uh, I'm just gonna lightly dampen it down. I don't like to have the hair dripping wet. I just like to have it uh, semi semi damp when I'm cutting it. So even if I shampoo somebody first, you know, I make sure I towel dry them really good if I have to. I'll use the hair dryer on them, so because if it's too wet, the hair sticks together, uh, and, and especially if you're working with fine hair, it really sticks together, and you can't tell how the hair is going to lay when you cut it. So sometimes, sometimes you may even want to cut it dry. So what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, cut the top, scissor over comb first, and then since he said he wants an eighth on the side, I'm going to work from my longest blade uh, until I get down to my eighth. So I'm going to start with a half inch, a three eighths, a quarter, and an eighth. So when I start when I start and fade my way down, I never create a line, so I never have to blend it out. So that eliminates the need for blending. So that cuts out probably 15 minutes of the haircut, and and then we're we're much more accurate. So because the because if we start at the bottom and we go up and we stop, and then we cut the top, then we have this big area in here that we have to blend out, and then that causes a lot of stress and anxiety. So. Um, So I would rather not work as hard, but still have just as good, or if not a better haircut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn him to the side a little bit. I'm going to have him bend his head forward. So the other thing I'm looking for too is before I start, I, so I want to get a center guide when, when I when I cut the top. But what you want to look, you want to look nice, you want to look closely at the hairline. Okay. So so his hairline underneath, it's 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 this shape. So if we if we cut too short in the corners when there's a little bit of a recession we're going to wind up with a hole there. So we want it to look straight across, but we don't want it to look like we put a bowl on his head either. So, um, yeah, exactly. So we want to, we want a softer out. So we're, we're going to over direct it a little bit, but not, but not too far. And then in the corners, we're going to have to over direct it farther. So I'm going to use, actually, so you can see the hair, I'm going to use a lighter colored comb. I'm going to use my gray comb. I'm going to go right down the center and get my center guide. Now, if you can see, I have the comb angled down slightly and it just pushes the hair. I'm using my seven and a half inch shear. Now, with, with shorter hair, you don't want to pick it up with your fingers because you can't take that many sections. So the, ne the next pass that I take with my shears, if anybody wants to count out loud or count to yourself how many times I open and close the scissor, it's just not possible to pick your hair, the hair up that many times. Or especially in my case, my fingers, like if the hair is going to be shorter than the width of my fingers, you're going to wind up with scissor marks every time you pick the hair up and cut it. So that's why you want to go scissor over comb and you want it to be really short and you want, you want to um, take a lot of sections. The more sections you take, the less risk you run of having scissor marks. So that comb goes real slow. Just like later on when you see me doing my clipper, I move the clippers real slow so the blade can go back and forth and, and really work. Make sure we keep his face cleaned off. Okay, so now we'll take the next section. And now I'm going to lift it up just a little bit higher and over direct it back a little bit more. So that way we don't cut a hole in the corner. Okay, and then at the very end, what I'll do in the front to shorten up the front is I won't over direct the hair back as far. Sometimes what I'll do is, you know, when I, when I cut, I over direct it back a little farther just to be safe, so I give myself some room. So then if, if I don't cut the front as short as I initially wanted to cut it, I can go back and then not go back as far and then start down a little bit lower. And that'll, that'll cut the length a little bit shorter but it won't give it that bowl look. Very rarely, if ever, do I take the scissors and cut straight across the front. Because once you cut straight across the front, you're making a line, and whenever you make a line, you gotta blend it out, and then that adds a whole extra step. So, and especially with longer haircuts like, 
a little bit longer top like mine or the next two models. With the styles today, the front is always supposed to be longer. So we create that by over directing it back, correct? So we create that longer front and then we, if we comb it down and then we cut straight across the front, then all of a sudden that longer front is now the shortest part. So we have this one short piece here, one short layer, and then the rest is longer. So when you comb it back, you're going to see a line going right across the center or it's probably not going to stay back. Okay, so let's see. So we got that one side. Now here where it's a little bit longer, we just put the comb in that way. And that takes care of the length and it leaves and and by by following that motion all the way through, it cuts the length, but it also leaves it softer instead of leaving a straight line by doing it this way. So now we'll come around and we'll cut the other side. So you've been waiting for this haircut for a little while. I, when I saw you, I almost didn't recognize you. I haven't yeah. seen you with hair this long. Okay, so now we'll start on the other side. I'll turn his head towards me so I don't have to reach over so far. So for most of you, when someone comes in like this, would you, would you cut it scissor over comb or would you pick it up with your fingers? Okay. Are you noticing that when you do that, you see uh, lines and then you have to go back with blending shears? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so you can control the, and again, this goes back to my training, learning this way, you can control the whole shape of the haircut with the comb. I mean, I could do this, you know, I can do this with, um, I could do this with a texturizing scissor and just keep the scissor in the same place, that would cut length. You know, I could do it with a clipper over comb. The, the, the biggest thing is, the most important thing is how we're picking the hair up with the comb. And you know we're over directing it so we don't leave that hole. And this haircut is more of a, what I would call a contoured shaped haircut, meaning it follows the shape of his head versus um, my hairstyle where it has to be square, where I have to have the weight in the corners for it to cut, for it to comb back and to lay down in the back. Greg, how far are you cutting into the comb with the scissors? Where is it going? Okay. So I'm I'm using um, the first. Uh, third to half of the scissor. Do you want to come up a little closer and yeah. take a yeah, come on up. It's lonely up here. Bob's not talking to me. <laughs> I can't see that good either, but uh, I've cut his hair before, so. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is perfect. It is. Isn't it? I say, uh, so I angle it forward. Now by angling the comb down, see how it lifts the hair and pushes the hair? Mm -hmm. Versus if I held the comb this way. Now if I, hold, if I held the comb this way, watch what happens to my, my whole body and everything. I'm, I'm leaning way up, it's very uncomfortable, and then it just kind of pu it just pushes the hair, and you but can't grab it. here, when you're here, mm -hmm. you will lift it that way, so, right? Nope, I would still hold the comb this way. Oh. See how it lifts the hair all the way up? Yeah, yeah. Versus doing this, it, pu okay. it pushes the hair and you can't. So what happens then is you wind up one cut, two cuts, three, four, where we want to smooth it out and all be one motion. I guess so I we do never that sometimes. Yeah. The way you're saying not to do it. Yeah. <laughs> because I figure the fade, you know, it won't cut it too short. I guess yeah. when I go up. Yeah, that's okay. But yeah. on the on um on, on Michael and Brian, well, yeah, we'll, okay. we'll we'll work with you. Don't worry. There's. <laughs> No, I, I love learning. Yeah. This. Yeah, but see how see how easy it is to grip and grab grip the hair. Yeah. Yeah, I used to get so frustrated when I was in my apprenticeship. I would watch I would watch I would watch my father do it, and it looked so easy. And then I would try, and the, you know the the hair wouldn't stay in the comb, and I, I just I just couldn't get it, and it's just practice. Scissors are awesome. Great. Oh, here. Go ahead. Hold them. They're very. I I work with like five inch. Six. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll grab we'll graduate. We, we can go I to six out. and a half first. Yeah. Yeah. Watch. Hang on. Hang on. Elbow up. Right. Just push. There you go. Now just your thumb. 
There you go. That's it. Okay. That's it. Right. <laughs> All right. A big round of applause for Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got the front in pretty good shape there. So now what we're going to do is, so that's the top section. So the next section to prepare the haircut for the fade, now what I want to do is I want to cut down what I call the round of the head section. So I break it down, like I said, I try to keep everything as simple as possible. Anything above the um, the parietal and occipital area, I just call it the round of the head. Keep it simple, instead of using big words, okay? Where the head rounds, I call it the round of the head. So that's about this section right in through here. So that's, that's the next step down. So I want to remove the bulk from there, so when I go in with my larger blade and take an imaginary line straight up in the air, it'll just fade right in, and we won't have any line to blend out. So by cutting the top first, I create my guide, so now I'm going to blend this long hair to my guide here. So what happens when I start on the side first, not that you can't do it that way or it's wrong, it's just we're cutting the sides first and we're blending to the top that we haven't cut yet, so we're blending to a guide that's we're going to cut. That's not there. So what I want to do is, and I don't think I brought my, I have a white comb like this, which I didn't bring, so I'll use my gray comb so you can see it. Does somebody have nails that they can... Thank you very much. Okay. I was thinking about using the tip of my scissors, but. I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 just kidding. <laughs> You're the only one that got that. <laughs> and you don't even cut hair. <laughs> All right, so just one drop. You know, we're not going to load it down. Where metal is rubbing against metal. And then one drop in the middle. That's it. Okay, so then we turn the clipper on, we shut it. This particular one has, uh, has uh, five speeds. I generally use a third speed. But for this step, I can use a second speed. So I'm using my one and a half blade. Now here's one of the things that I wanted to tell you earlier before I, before I forget. Um, the one and a half blade, when I, had that, when I had that job with Oster, he did the majority of his clipper over comb cutting with his one and a half blade. Now what that did was it cut and blended at the same time, and it really got me comfortable with clipper over comb. So if you look at the difference from the side, one blade is your adjustable clipper in the open position. Okay? Now you see the difference in the width of the blade? This is a one and a half blade. It's an eighth of an inch. So the, the uh, width, it's wider. Okay, so already once you put this on your comb, you're already an eighth of an inch away from your comb. So whatever's in the comb, you're going to cut the hair a half an inch, an eighth of an inch longer. And then if you look at, the, if you look at the, uh, the teeth, the teeth are a lot longer also. And what that does is it gives it a softer, a softer finish. So instead of just zap, like zapping it off, like if you, took a, if you took an adjustable clipper and you closed it down all the way and, see, and, and you made a blunt cut and you wind up with a lot of um, uh, razor marks. And when I started out and I started doing that, I couldn't figure out why I had all these lines on the side when I was doing clipper over comb. So instead of taking a, bl a blunt cut, now we're using a softer cut. Now to take it one step further, when you're using a, when you're using a, a clipper comb, when the heel of the blade is on the comb, you're taking length. But with this particular blade, you're taking length and blending. Now, as the farther away I pull that heel of the blade away from the comb, the more blending and the less cutting I do. And then at the very end, if I, if I tilt it at almost a 90 degree angle, it's, it's basically it's like point cutting with 19 scissors. And we, or I'm sorry, 18 scissors because there's 18 blades. And you just run it across a couple times and it blends the side to the top. So you don't even have to pull out your, your thinning scissors. Because with Bob's hair, his hair is similar to mine in the fact that in texture. And if you go in there with thinning shears, it's going to split the hair. And you might not notice it right away when you cut it. But when it grows in and that customer comes back, you're going to see that the ends are going to look all frayed. And, and I, I hate when that happens when I have a customer come back and I'm looking at it. And I'm like, oh, I knew I shouldn't use the, the thinning scissors last time. So um, either be really smooth with your scissor over comb and th this is the, or this is a, a, really, a really good tool um, to use. So what I do for this round of the head section, 
So I'll use the gray comb so you can see it. I'm just gonna come through here and remove some of this bulk with the heel of the blade on the comb. And as I work my way up, I'm gonna round the comb in. Now see how, as I was working my way up, I'm pulling the heel of the blade out, but it's kind of all in one movement. And then at the very end, it just blends in. Now I wanna make sure I take enough off so when I go in with my clipper up the side, it's short enough where I'm not gonna create a weight line. Now there's two ways to hold your clipper. Okay, we have, everybody write this down. We have an overhand grip, which means your hand is over the clipper. We got that? And we have an underhand grip where your hand is under the clipper. Very complicated. <laughs> <laughs> so my rule is whenever the clipper is, a, is at or above the temple, I switch to the underhand grip. Because when I'm using my overhand grip, watch what happens to my elbow and my shoulder. And then watch what happens when I switch to the underhand grip. Now watch what, hands of, what happens if I'm using my underhand grip under, under the round of the head. Watch what happens to my posture. Right. Now if I switch to the overhand grip, I'm, my shoulders are back again, right? And I'm standing up straight. Because whatever you're doing, Bob sees in the mirror. So if I'm, if I'm doing this, he's thinking, does he know what he's doing? And you might feel comfortable. But then, like, if, if, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But if you were to actually, if someone were to film you or you to watch yourself in the mirror, because I do this on a lot of my classes, I'll walk around and I'll take a picture, because, you know, we do what we cover a lot of scissor over comb and clipper over comb. And, you know, when someone's doing it, you know, the wrong way or the right way, I'll take pictures and show them the difference. And because you might not know it, but then when you see it, oh, okay, now I see what you're talking about. So a lot of times it's just not comfortable because you haven't developed that habit or that skill set yet. It just takes a little time. So then I just start on the right. I work my way all the way around so my previous guide is always in the comb. Now with thin enough combs, you could do this all scissor over comb or all clipper over comb. But I do want to show you all the, the advantages of using the metal blades as well. Because back to my training, this was a haircut I had to, again, I had to do all scissor over comb first, all clipper over comb, and then I could use attachments. Okay, so any questions so far? Can everybody see okay? If you can't see, it's okay to get a little, get, come up closer. Okay, so again, this is, this is creating myself a guide for the next step. So everything I do, I want to create a guide for the next step. Now, one of the habits that I started to develop when I, used, when, I used a, um, when I switched to cordless clippers was I started moving around the chair too much, which is an added step of walking around and taking too much time, which with a corded clipper, you know, my clippers are right here. The chair spins, I stand in the same spot and I just spin the chair one way, I spin it back the other and I don't move. Then I switch to cordless clippers and then all of a sudden I just somehow, I just started wandering again. So that's a habit, that, that's something I have to work, work on with my cordless clippers. Now, if you pay close attention to the comb, so you can see when I'm holding the comb like this, it's just very easy, just back and forth through, and my wrist never moves. Everybody can see my wrist has not moved once, whereas I was trying to, if I was doing it like this, I'd be coming around this. I wouldn't even, you know, and I would start flipping it. It's one movement. And then you comb it down and you check it, and then it's one movement back up. Now the other thing that you have to be really careful about when we're doing this is I'll walk around and I'll show both sides of the room is where the recession is we have to keep uh, an eye on it because just like in the front we don't want to create a hole we don't want to create a hole from the side so we want to take an imaginary line kind of straight up in the air and then maybe at the very end just round it in slightly if I if I round the comb this way I'm gonna cut a hole so I want to make sure that I'm starting to pull that comb away 
or, or, or right, right here. So my fade is even, because he's not going to flip the front up. So if someone's going to wear their hair down or part it down, you want to make sure that the fade is, is, isn't higher than the front, because then the haircut's going to be out of balance. So we have to be very careful, very careful of that. So we start pulling that comb away there on both sides. All right, so now I'm going to start working with my blades. So anytime I'm done with the clipper blade, I always brush it off. And I generally, and I always, and I like to do it when I'm standing right next to the customer. So if I'm brushing this off after I used it, what do you think I did with this blade when I used it on the last customer? Mm -hmm. You wiped it off. Exactly. It's clean for me. Yep. So that's the thought process of the customer. So that's, um, that's pretty cool. And I didn't have to coach you ahead of time to give the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'm using, um, so the, the blade numbers are different for the metal blades. A half inch on a metal blade, whether it's um, Andis or Oster, is a three and three quarter. That's a half inch. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an imaginary line straight up in the air. Actually, let me bump this up to third gear. Okay. All right, now if you look really closely at my wrist, my wrist is not moving at all. Not even at the end, see where that hair is on the clipper? Even the tendency to want to do this, that's going to create a line there. <laughs> so don't do it. Okay, so then I just, I do this, and then at the very end, off to the side. So now when I stand back and I look, or I look in the mirror and I turn around. So that's the first step of our fade or our taper. So even if that's as close as we went, will, will I have completely cut the blending step out of the haircut? Right? Okay, cool. This is probably the single best thing I've, I, 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 I've learned you know, throughout my whole career. Is that hair on the clipper bothering anybody? Okay. <laughs> Does anybody want to take a closer look? Has anybody seen this technique before? Let me ask that first. Okay. Has anybody that hasn't seen this technique before want to take a closer look? So we're just taking an imaginary line straight up in the air and my wrist does not move at all. The, the, this motion comes from my elbow. I'm just going to turn your head towards me. Mm -hmm. This mo the motion com is coming from my shoulder. Even my elbow is still. All right, so now while I have him on this side, I'm not going to spin him around and start on the right again. So now that I have him on this side, I'm going to put my next blade down, which is a three and a half blade, which is three eighths of an inch. So remember again, in the beginning, I said half, three eighths, quarter, eighth. He wants to go down to an eighth. So I have my blades all lined up. Okay, so now I have my three eighths on there. So now, we're, now we have to, instead of straight up in the air, now, about a half inch below where I left off with the, the previous blade, I want to start to very slow, not scoop it, but just push the heel of the blade in about a half inch below. When I push on the heel of the blade, see what it does to the teeth? They pop out just a little bit. That's all we want. And then straight up in the air. So now we're not going to have any, so we're not going to have any line. So this I would call floating the blade. So I'm kind of floating it away from the head. But you see how straight my wrist is still? So no, so, no, so no line still. So now I'm down to the second blade. We're going to go two blades shorter, but no line.
Because I, I don't care how many times that I've tried going with the shortest blade first and making that line and blending it out. I mean, I get it out, but it's never on the first try. I never can just go over it once and it comes out. I don't know what it is, but it just doesn't come out that easy. It's just like when you're when you want to tape. It's just like when you want to taper the back. If you go in with a five zero or a trimmer and line it and then try to taper it out, it just it takes for some reason it just takes forever versus working your way down and just fading it out with the adjustable. I mean, there's a lot of barbers out there that are just absolutely incredible barbers and can do it and um, you know can have it done in, in about 30 seconds. But I just would really recommend you know. If you're just getting into your men's cutting career or in school, you know, learn it this way first before you start experimenting with that. Um, well, you see these little sparkles here, these platinum <laughs> sparkles? As we start to get these coming in, sometimes you have to go in a couple different directions to cut them off. They don't, it, it doesn't come off as easy. So if he didn't have those in there, I could probably just get it in one shot. But sometimes it doesn't, if it doesn't get it in the first shot, I'll go in a couple different directions. and. If you look really close, it was on this side. So this side is growing straight forward. So I have to come, I come against the grain. But when I'm coming against the grain, I have to make sure that, okay, the hair grows forward, I come against the grain, but still the, keep in mind the head is round and I can't keep it flat. I have to, I have to still respect the fade and keep it and keep the blade angled out. So I'm still straight out. Almost like you're pulling it out with your fingers. And then here, his hair is growing. This side's growing forward. This side, it kind of curves back. So here's where I'll, I'll kind of, I'll come forward a little bit. And then here it grows forward. Then I come back this way and go forward. So like this is a lot of the stuff we get into with shaving, you know, with different growth patterns. You always want to be going, well, shaving is different because you always want to go with the grain first. But when you're cutting hair, you always want to go against the grain so it feeds into the, into the clipper. Because if you go with the grain, you're gonna lose, you're go it's not gonna cut. But there are exceptions to every rule. If you're working on um, uh, uh, textured hair, uh, if you're working on a really thick um, uh, African American or Hispanic um, hair that um, they want, you wanna keep the wave on top, you're gonna go, you're gonna cut with the, with the growth pattern instead of cutting into it because if, if you cut into it if you cut into it it'll take the if you cut into it it'll take the wave out if you use a so like if you use a one and a half and I cut into it the wave's completely gone if I use a one and a half and go with it then then you have the nice wave pattern you can put the cream in there and dry it and you have a nice shiny wave pattern so that's um that's the exception to the rule okay so now I'm going down to my quarter inch blade which is the next one down so we have two blades left so now what I'm gonna to start to do, now you see my wrist is moving a little bit now? Just a little bit. So I'm gonna use a two, a one and a half, and then I'm gonna use three different lengths with my adjustable around the edges. So now in this space, I use two blades, two lengths, and in this space, I'm gonna use five or six. So now I don't have enough, I'm, I have a lot less room where I'm gonna be using the five or six lengths where I use the two lengths. So now I have to start using a little bit of, uh, a little bit of wrist movement. Exactly, yep, it's this way. We don't have to worry about it, right? So we're not gonna we're not gonna make that line. Okay, so in the back we have more room because there's obviously more room. So now I can go back to keeping my wrist straight, and then when I get back to this side, just above the ear, I'm gonna start using a little bit of a a little bit of a scooping motion with with my wrist. As far 
are the amount of errors they have, and you can get a lot of that patchy, yeah, especially with blondes that have some darker and lighter in there. Uh, it's hard because especially, um, I have a few customers like that where they either have indents, which makes the hair look darker. Mm -hmm. You got to really grip the head and stretch the skin okay. so you can get in and cut it. Um, just different colors, there's really, there's nothing you do. You could, you could try to go at the end with your, um, uh, a really fine tapering shear, turn it upside down and try to, um, try to get in there. But at some point you need to know when to just kind of leave it alone. You know, you just, you're, you're not, you're not always going to get that absolute perfect fade like we see on Instagram because you got to remember on Instagram only only our best work should go on Instagram <laughs> okay so now now the difference now my elbow and my shoulder aren't moving at all and now just my wrist is moving Okay, because I just have a little bit of room. So as the blades get shorter, the fading motion gets shorter. The longer the blades, the fading motion is more elongated. And see here, he's got a little bit of what you were talking about. He's got a little bit of an indentation back here. Yes, yep. <laughs> yep. That's when you just, that's when you put the comb down. <laughs> you stretch a little bit. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to clean all this up. Most of us are realistic, we know. But the thing that I, really like that I'm seeing now with the, with, the, with the young kids, which used to take forever between the kids and the parents to figure out what they want. They have the phone, they have you know whoever's Instagram account out, or they have pictures, and so I know exactly what they want. So now that consultation is less than five minutes when it used to be 15 or 20. And then they got 10 minutes left to do the haircut. <clears throat> okay, so can you see how, like, we look at his before I finish. So. When I first started, when I would look at that, I would think, how am I ever going to taper that out? How am I going to fade that out? What am I going to do? It looks like I would stress about it the whole haircut. But when you look at this side, as I work my way down from longer blades to shorter blades, it doesn't look, it doesn't look as scary. It doesn't look as, as stressful. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Right? So I don't, if someone has the, the world's worst hairline, I don't even, I don't even look at it. I, all I know is if I start at the top, I work my way down. By the time I get to it, it's going to be a lot easier than it looks now. I'll worry about it then. So I only focus on the step that I'm on because if I don't do, if I don't do the, the, the half inch step properly, uh, then by the time I get down to the three eighths or the quarter, I'm going to have to go back and do this. It's going to make that next step that much harder. So that's why I, um, uh, you want to only focus on that one step and make sure you do it 100%. Did anybody catch what I just did? I did. I broke the rule. And I didn't realize I did it. Okay, so now we pull that ear down. So now when you pull the ear down, don't be afraid to pull the ear down and stretch the skin because that pops the hair out. So that way we can just lightly go over and, and, sh and shave it. Because Otherwise, it hurts. You know, you have a metal blade and you're pushing that into somebody's, you know, a guy's head. And most of us aren't going to admit if something hurts or not. You know, you may see a, you may see a random tear come out of somebody's eye, but <laughs> we're still not going to admit it. All right, so now we're pretty much... The bulk of the haircut is there, so now we're going to switch to what I call the semi-finish. I thought I brought more combs with me. But. All right, so now I'm going to start in the all the way open position. So I'm going to, with my adjustable clipper, I'm going to do three positions. I'm going to do open, I'm going to do halfway open, and then I'm going to do all the way closed. And we're going to fade it right out. So I'm going to pull the ear down, and that hair pops right out. So now it's, now it's all wrist. And now 
I wouldn't even call this a scooping motion. I would call this more a flicking motion. So we go from from that wrist being still to to float to kind of floating the blade to scooping, and now to just a little bit of a flick. So. Over the sideburns, you want to leave enough on so then when I line it off, you see a little bit of a sideburn. Then I pull the ear down, you see that hair pop out? Now with guys, this is what bothers us the most. We want to get that hair off the ear. So I'm using the last three or four teeth, a 45 degree angle, and I'm just coming around the ear to the top of the ear. If I can't see the blade, I stop cutting. And then I come from the front so I can see the blade. Because if I can't see the blade, I can't see where it's cutting. It might be cutting his skin, it might be cutting his hair. Now I'm going to bend his head to the side. I'm going to follow the natural hairline. I don't, I don't want to take it in. I don't want to cut it in off the natural hairline. So now on the bottom, we're going to bend his head forward. And we're just going to, we're just going to use a, that scooping motion with the blade open in the widest position. So how this works is you want to keep the top of the blade parallel to the floor, okay? Because if we don't, and we're going to start rounding the corners. We don't want to round the corners because when we come and we make that nice straight line, we're going to lose that diagonal. It's going to be rounded. We want a nice straight line on the hairline. So we're going to keep it parallel to the floor. We're going to come across. And once I get to where the hairline once I get to where the hairline ends, I start to scoop it out just before that. So I don't cut into it. So that's our first step. So the taper is pretty much there. Now we're going to close it halfway and we're not going to go as high and we're going to come back across. That's a little easier. Okay, I hope I'm not in everybody's way over here. So now I'm going to come back across. Now I'm going to close it down all the way and I'm going to do it again and I'm going to stay even lower and now our taper's there so now when we come back with the trimmer on the neck all we have to do is pull this down and clean up the fuzz on the neck. It's all done. So we'll do the same thing on this side. And now when we pull that, you see how that hair pops out? So that makes it really easy to taper. I'm going to close it halfway and not go as high. Then I'm going to close it all the way. Okay, so now we have a nice taper. And then I'm going to take my trimmer. I'm going to make sure his chin is parallel to the floor. And we're going to line it off. And as I said, see where my middle finger is? Right there. It's resting on his on his face and it keeps me from pressing too hard and then I turn around and I shave up to it. I pull the ear down. I already have the taper so I'm not going to draw this high arcing white wall around the outline of the haircut. I'm just going to pull his ear down and clean up with the corner of the clipper just a few, those few little hairs that are sticking out. I don't want to go in like this and press because the ear around the skin it can cut or nick really easy. So. I don't use any pressure around the ear. Now on this side, okay, I'm going to bend his head to the side. This is where I want the hairline. I don't want to cut it in off the natural hairline. So if you want to kind of give yourself a guide, if you press just a little bit with the comb and you pull away, you see, you see a little bit of a white mark? And then take a mental picture of that. And then we just very lightly just touch the skin and turn around and shave to it. Because pressing is not going to get a sharper line. Um, stretching the skin will give you a sharper line, and shaving with a straight razor will give you a sharper line, which we'll do when we're done. So now I'm going to unhook him here. I'm going to pull his chain down. And now all I have to do is, as I said before, we're going to shave up right here, and we're going to stop. The taper's already done, so we don't have to worry about messing up the taper. We just clean that hair up. Nobody's ever going to drag down again like this, right? No. You promise? Yeah. Okay. Okay, my general rule is I'll, I'll shave down to the t-shirt line. That's it. 
Okay, and we'll... Okay, now same thing on this side. Make sure his chin is parallel to the floor. So one of the things I do is I film a lot of videos and we take a lot of photos and we film a lot of videos and uh, had this one model and the haircut came out great. We had all these great photos and this one photo I wanted to use and I looked at it and the sideburn was like this because I didn't have, as, as I was doing the haircut, I, didn't I couldn't believe it as I was looking through the photos. As I didn't, I, 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 he must have been still looking down. So when I went like this, when he was looking down and then you lift up, you see the angle of the... So, all right, so that's that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to shave his neck and his sideburn area. And this is something that you can all do right away for your license to do. So I, I put a towel on like this. And I always like to clean the hair cloth off first before I do that or do any styling. All right, so I have two shaving products. I have a shave gel and a shave lotion. They can be used as a standalone or they can be used together. So when I'm using it in the shop, what I like to do is use the gel first as a pre-shave. That's a clear gel that has some pre-shave oil in it, has aloe vera in it, which softens the skin, and it has um, chamomile in it, which is an anti-inflammatory. So we put just a little bit on the sideburns and then on the back of the neck. And the nice thing is you can see right through it so you can see what you're shaving. And then, um, where's my towel? And then I use the shave lotion, which is, uh, it has the consistency of a, more of a hand cream. And it's semi-transparent when you put it on there, so you can still see through it. And this also has aloe vera in it, chamomile, shea butter, cocoa butter. So even though it doesn't go on really thick, um, the, razor, the razor glides real smooth right through it. And then if you do have a hot lather machine, uh, like we do in the shops, then I'll put the hot lather on over it. Okay, so I take my razor, and what I do is because it's a heavy razor and I want to have a lighter touch, I mean the correct way to hold the razor is just your pinky on the one side. What I do is, uh, so to, to, to guarantee that I have a lighter touch, because sometimes I can have a heavy hand, I put two fingers on the other side and that lightens my touch on the razor. So I stretch the skin and then I just take a few quick strokes. and I hold the weight of the razor in my hand. So what happens is when I stretch the skin that, like this, the hair pops out, so I don't have to use any pressure. I just glide it across the skin and the hair comes off real easy. You have a nice sharp blade. So then we do the same thing in the corner. Right here, we stretch the skin. Okay, and once I'm about two inches away from my finger stretching the skin, I re-grip because I want to be really close to where the tension is when I'm shaving. How do you keep your fingers from Because I feel like my hands are sliding on the time. Yeah, um, by the time it slides, it's time to regrip anyway. So when you're stretching, see how my hand is slipping, then it's time to regrip anyway. And then if I'm shaving somebody's face, what I'll do is um, I'll grab a smaller, I mean, this is a big towel, I'll grab a smaller barber towel and uh, I'll do it like I'll hold it like this, and then your finger won't slip at all. So you are doing some shaving. Yeah. Great faces or just the neck or? Um, mainly just the neck. Like mm -hmm. sometimes on like a line or like on the cheeks, but like I'm too scared to go underneath like the chin. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's harder 
it's, it's harder under the neck, just and the atoms getting around the atoms happen and all that. It takes a lot of practice. Even the coarseness of the hair is kind of terrifying to me. Mm -hmm. So what you really need to do is you have to really soften up the hair with the right products, mm -hmm. and um, and then you have to shave with the grain, and you have to stretch the skin properly, and you just have to practice. Do you um, teach the, when you're hands-on? Do you teach the shaving? Um, in my the hands-on classes, I don't. We do seven haircuts on a mannequin. Okay. Um, if I'm going to teach uh, shaving, the best way to do that is to come to you at your at your place and have you line up the models, and I'll I would bring I would bring the um, the shaving supplies and the hot towel steam machine and all that stuff. Because there's really no way to teach it unless you're working on live models. Mm -hmm. yeah, I learned on a balloon. They do <laughs> it <you>? in barber <laughs> <laughs> So on the other side we switch, so this is your freehand stroke. So on the other side we have to turn the razor around the other way and switch to a backhand stroke. Because if you're doing it this way, you know you're going to cut into the you're going to cut into the hairline. So you, you have to use your your backhand stroke. And then you can switch back to the freehand stroke because uh, not Bob, but but a lot of guys. What will happen is their neck hair will connect to their beard hair. So we want to make sure that we clean that up. So then on the other side, then we switch back to our backhand stroke. Okay, and we just really stretch that skin. And then here where he's got a little bit of stubble, what I was talking about, when you have to be fast with the razor, you just, you get, when you just go like that, it just takes it right off with the right product and you can barely feel it, you barely hear it. So you have four hand positions. You have your free hand, okay, and then you have your reverse free hand, which this, you know, down below here, sometimes you would use it a little bit here. You have your, you have your back hand stroke, and then you have your reverse backhand stroke. So you have four different strokes with the razor. Okay, so now that that's all dried off, what I normally do is I just, I just blot it off because you never want to rub after shaving because that irritates the skin. And then I'll just take just a touch more of the gel because most of this, uh, most of this because it has so much moisturizers in it and it rubs right into the skin anyway, you don't need as much. I'll just take a little bit more of the gel and then I'll put it on as an aftershave. Putting any product in your hair, or do what you feel like. You okay. Need to <laughs> All right. So what I would use on Bob is, on this type of haircut, someone that doesn't normally put any product in their hair, I would use uh, I would use a uh, grooming cream, which is a medium hold and a medium shine. I need a lot to use about that much. This particular, my particular grooming cream has uh, coconut oil and lavender oil in it, so it's really moisturizing for the hair and for the scalp. And it's not going to look or feel like, he, to him, because he's not used to wearing products, it's not going to look like he has a lot of product in his hair. What you have in yours? I have uh, the Firm Hold gel in mine. But uh, my gel, the way I had it designed, I wanted it, um, it's more like a pomade. It's more like a liquid version of a pomade, so it'll hold my hair up. Most, most gels, you know, are, are more watery and they flatten the hair out. Um, so mine's more, I would, it's more a liquid version of pomade. I put it in when, I put it in when my hair is dry and then it'll, it'll lift the hair right up. Okay, so then I comb it all the way through and then we just kind of mess it up a little bit. Alrighty, sir. Alrighty. You are all Thank set. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. It's a, pl it's a pleasure Thank as always. Pleasure. Thank you again for being a model. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, so now we are going to fix up Brian here.
We had a lengthy con a consultation earlier, which ended in Brian telling me, do whatever looks good. <laughs> so do you have any more to add to that, Brian? Or? <laughs> I'm flexible. Okay. As long as it's not too short or too long, right? Exactly. <laughs> Goldilocks. <laughs> And Brian has also taken my hands-on class as well. Good class, if anybody's thinking of taking it. Mm -hmm. And Brian is also a lifetime of More kinds of things. <laughs> you always wanted to do it, right? That's right. Okay, so... So let's get serious here. So, you, so what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm doing right now is when I, I always like to, when the hair is wet, I brush it back. I want to find out where the natural part is. So now I know where his natural part is. And then when I spin him around and as I'm brushing his hair, what I'm looking for is as I'm brushing it, where is, where is the hair lifting up? Where does it look like it wants to stand up? Because just because somebody's getting a haircut doesn't mean we have to cut every hair on their head. So we want to make sure that you know, we cut what needs to be cut and leave what needs to be left. So he has, you know, a little bit over here I can see wants to stand up. If you look real closely, you know, his part is here. He's got a calic there. He's got one here. And then on this opposite side here, he's got something going on over here where it all wants to stick out. So what I'm thinking is if we're going to take any off the top, we're just going to take it through the center. And if we're going to take any off the sides, we're just going to be around the ears. So, um... Now, what do you want? Is there anything in particular that you want to do or don't want to do? Well, um, I, like I was telling you before, um, this is kind of the residue of last summer's kind of a, a somewhat of an undercut, so it's kind of longer on top. I mean, I want to keep the same basic shape. I do like a hard part. Okay. I could uh, incorporate that. And, um, you know, nothing. Uh, I'm not, I'm not that particular. Whatever you think would be okay. good, good for the class. Okay. So what I would like to do is, like I said, leave it longer, both sides here, give you a nice taper around the edges, just a little bit off the top, cut the hard part in, and then style it, and give you a little bit more lift on top, style it with, you know, put some gel in there, and then style it, and then some pomade in there afterwards. Sounds good. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the top, with my seven inch here and his hair grows pretty much to the side so I'm going to stand on this side and I'm going to come from the front and I'm going to over direct I want the front to be the longest part of the haircut because I want him to have a little bit of lift in the front okay and I want to make sure my finger is parallel to the floor I'm using a traveling guide instead of a stationary guide can anybody explain to me what a traveling guide is? Exactly. That's good. We got the comedian in here too. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to spin him to the side here. So when I got back to here, eventually we run out of hair to cut. So I want to cut on this plane. Okay. So. What does that what does that tell you about the length of his hair uh, the length of his hair in the front and the center and the back? The front and the back are Exactly. So the front the front's going to be longer, so we have more lift, and the back's going to be longer so it doesn't stand up. And then it's going to be the same this way. Okay, the center is going to be a little bit shorter and the corners are going to be longer cuz this is exactly what we what we talked about, we don't want this sticking out. And it's going to be the same thing on the side. I'm going to do more. Of, I'm going to do more of a graduate, gra more graduation on the sides. <clears throat> so that's pretty much it on the top. Um, I'm going to do a little razor sculpting in the front to lighten it up. But that's pretty much all I wanted to do through the top was take one section through the center because this already looks like it wants to stand up. So if that's the case, we just it's okay not to cut it. Does that stress anybody out to not cut every hair on the head? I know sometimes it, you feel like you have to. But, but, what, but what's going to happen is, so if I start cutting here, I'm going to start rounding the corners. And once you start rounding the corners on a square-shaped haircut, it's all over. 
So you, it, one of the most important things to, do, to, to, to understand and learn how to do is know when to leave it alone. Okay, so now in the back, I'm going to just pull it out and take, we're going to take a little bit off the back and I'm going to work to the right. Now see how I'm angling the finger and my fingers? Uh, these are seven inches. The shortest ones I have are six and a half. I just got these. I really like these. They're really comfortable. So, All right, so then that's about it right there. I want to leave that long enough so that that's going to lay down. You can see that it all or wants to stick out a little bit there, so we're going to leave that alone. Um, he and, and, and it makes sense because he told me over the summer he's basically has an undercut growing out. So if you can picture an undercut, you know, the, his, his hair is shorter there. And it grows straight forward. So when hair grows straight forward and you're fighting the way it grows, you need, the, the only thing that combats that is length for, for it to lay down. So when customers come in and say, I've been training my hair for, for two months, you know, I listen, I don't, you know, I, but really what they're doing is it's, they're, you know, you can't train hair. You let it get long enough so it'll lay down. All right, so same, same thing here. It wants to stick out, so there's not much to cut there. So I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm not going to do anything there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the back, and I'm going to do, just, I'm going to do a scissor cut. So I'm going to start in the back. I'm going to use my 7-inch scissor. I'm going to start close at the bottom, and then I'm going to work my way out as, as I work up, up the back of the head. I'm using this here, this here for my guide. So remember I cut this section, the round of the head section. So it was just like uh, with Bob earlier when we cut the round of the head section clipper over comb and I created the guide, I'm going to cut that section. So this two finger width here, I'm not worried about that. We're going to do clipper over comb there. So we just work our way up. And he has um, <clears throat> very straight, fine hair, so you can see there's no, there's no scissor marks in there. So that's moving that comb really slow. And that way we take a lot of sections and we don't have any scissor marks. If anybody wants to take a closer look, feel free to come up. <clears throat> so the scissor moves fast, the comb moves slow. I say that right? Yeah. Scissor moves fast, comb moves slow. So when I was doing the um, when I was doing the clipper work, when I was going up real slow with the clipper, so the clipper was moving slow, but that cutting blade was going back and forth really fast, right? So it's the same same concept. So the one thing that's difficult uh, to do, and it just takes practice is both of your hands are doing two different things. Right? So one is moving slow and one's moving real fast. So what happens a lot of times in the beginning when you're getting used to doing scissor over comb, the faster the, the scissor open and closes, the faster the comb goes in, instead of your two hands doing two different things. A hundred years ago I used to play the drums and that's what I used to have a tough time with is two hands doing two different things and throwing in the bass drum and all that. It was very hard. Okay, so now we're going to come. Now, when you, hold, when you hold the comb properly, watch how easy it is. To, I don't even have to touch his ear. Watch how easy it is to get around the ear. And I'm protecting the ear with the comb. Right? And then we just, taper it, we just tapered it right around the ear without even touching the ear or moving the ear out of the way. <clears throat> And then at the end, what you can do is you can hold the ear down with the comb. Now what I hear a lot in the barber shop, you know, doing a haircut like this, is when you pull the scissors out and you use this technique, and you know, the customer says to you, wow, you're really taking your time, and I love getting a scissor cut. And I mean, to me, it doesn't really matter. I could use a plastic attachment, I could use metal blades, whatever. But there's a certain perception when you're using this technique and a scissor and comb, wow, 
You really take, you really care. You're really taking your time. You're using the scissors. You're using the comb. C customers notice everything. You know, you didn't ask me what number I want or any of that. So, um, those are big. Those, those are big, big things. So I'm just taking an imaginary line straight up in the air, just like I did with the clippers. So can you see the advantage of a bigger scissor? Okay. And then I'm purposely using the seven just to kind of show you that, you know, I mean, I, I normally I would use my eight and a half for this, but I'm, I'm showing you with the seven. So this would be the shortest that I would use for scissor over comb. Okay, so now can we see that? Now we're creating some movement up there. Now where this was kind of shorter than here, we just reverse it. And that's kind of the styles that are going on now, kind of like 1920s like we talked about where the tops and everything are longer. Uh, the, front, the front is the longest and it gets shorter as we work our way down to the taper in the back. Okay, is there anybody that can't see that would want to take a closer look? Because I know I, there's, it's impossible for me, I know it's impossible for me not to be in somebody's way. Okay, so again, I just, all I do is I comb the hair back. So that, that this is my motion with the comb. That's my range of motion. I comb around the ear and I hold the ear and protect the ear just like that. So I don't, we don't even have to touch the ear. And then to get all that hair from behind the ear, see how I'm holding the ear and then the comb takes the place of my finger. And then we just kind of round it right around the ear. So now what I do is that now I'll take my, my, adjust, my adjustable clipper, I'll open it up in the open position. I don't need my detachable blade clipper because I'm not working with a lot of hair, so I don't need all the extra power. So we'll clean it up around the edges. I hold the ear down. Can you all see the hair that's... I'm going to take the, the corner, those three or four teeth, at a 45 to 90 degree angle. And you want to pay close attention because he has one of those hair lines around his ear. It's thick in front, it's thick behind, but right on top, if I'm not careful, we could wind up cutting a hole there without realizing it. So that's another spot where sometimes you have to realize where to leave it and where to cut it. So I angle that comb at a 45 degree angle and whatever is sticking out of the comb I cut, whatever is not, I don't cut it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close it all the way and because the hair is growing away from me it's going to be hard to make a line so I'm just going to I'm going to shave to it and stop. And then that gives us that nice taper and that nice outline right there. And we just leave it alone. And now we're going to, going to um, taper out the back. So now I'm not moving the comb. I'm just angling the comb out using a, a scooping motion, just like I did with a larger blade. Because I don't want to get up into here and cut that shorter. I like the length that that's at. We just want to clean up the bottom of that hairline. Okay, and then once we do all that, we do the same thing. We have the clipper blade open. We're using a scooping motion. And where it goes straight up, I turn the clipper upside down and go straight down against the grain. And then the fine teeth, you can turn it around. 
because his hair is much thicker in the middle there. We want to taper that out. And the other thing I do sometimes is, you know, we do a lot of point cutting with shears. Did anybody know you could point cut with a clipper? You do? Okay, cool. So now I'll take it at a uh, 90 degree angle and just break up that, just break it up a little bit in the middle. And then I can always take it at a 45 degree angle and do the same thing. You just want to do it quick and scoop it out real quick. And that softens it up a little bit. Let me actually, okay, there we go. Okay, so now on this side, we gotta do the same thing. We're gonna taper this out. I'm gonna hold the ear down. Now see how once I pull that ear down, all that hair pops out? Now I'm gonna close it down all the way and shave to it. So the thing I like about this particular clipper is the shortest setting on this adjustable clipper is 440, which is one shorter than most adjustables and it's just one longer than a trimmer. So it's almost like using a trimmer. So whenever I can, whenever I can cut out a step, So same thing as in the back, I'm just scooping the comb out. Okay, instead of going instead of going straight up, because I wanna I wanna um, I wanna create that shorter to longer look. Okay, so now that we've finished that, now we're going to use our trimmer. We're going to make sure his chin is parallel to the floor. We're going to line it off, shave to it. We're going to pull the ear down, make sure there's no hair there. I really don't think there is. There's not much on the side there. We're going to open up his collar. So we're going to shave up to just below the hairline. So one of the other things to keep in mind too is when someone is taller and has more of a professional haircut and you know they just said he's a he's a lawyer then it tells you you want to finish it off a little bit more professional versus you know there's a definite definition when I started barbering you know taper just meant a faded hairline. Now it means a lot of different things. So you, you tell a barber a taper today, and it could mean, you know, almost balled it out to halfway up the ears below the occipital bone and really fade it out tight. It doesn't necessarily, so what I had to start <clears throat> distinguishing between is do you want, is explain what that means, or do you want just a low naturally faded hairline? So when I'm talking to people, you know, depending on age group, profession, all that, all that other stuff, um, a taper means different things to different people. So now I try to be as specific as I can. I ask as many questions as I can before I actually go ahead and do the haircut. If I'm the least bit unsure, I'm going to ask. Because if I guess, I'm probably going to be wrong. And one of the hardest lessons to learn is when you give somebody an incredible haircut, you're so happy with it, you want to take all these pictures of it, and they don't like it. And you can't figure out why. That's like the worst feeling in the world because it's technically everything is perfect and um, or as close to perfect as can be, but they don't like it and they're upset with you and um, you know it's, it's a tough situation. It can be easily corrected just by communication. How about your eyebrows? Are we going to trim your eyebrows while we're at it? Do they need that? What's that? Do they need that? You got a few long ones. It's up to you. Sure Personal regard, preference. Regard. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I'm using a real a thick comb so I don't cut him too close. And you notice I'm combing it all the way through so I'm protecting his eye. And the bottom of this blade is, it's a long way away from his eye. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to stop. Oh, we got to cut the we got to cut the part in now. Hang on. <clears throat> Getting ahead of myself. I don't think I want. Okay, so I want to find the natural part. Now I'm going to either have to get a step ladder or lean his head towards me so I can see. Oh, there we go. Thank you. So when I, when I, make, when I make these parts, what I want to do is I'm, I can see his, his crown is right here, so I'm not going to go any farther back than that. And I do it two ways. I go with the blade at this angle, and then I turn it upside down, and I use the blade at the other angle. So that way when we hit it at both angles, we get it, we get it nice and um, we get a nice sharp line. Um, I don't wiggle the blade. I let the blade do the work. So what I do is I set the blade where I want it and you know just give it a quick you know one second count and then move it and give it another one second count because if we try to make the line then we're going to wind up with it too wide. So we just touch the line to the head. The clipper goes back and forth. Let it do its thing. Right here. Right on the part. Right on. Yeah, why not? Right on. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I just touch it. One Mississippi, right? Okay, so that's the one side. And then we so now we got it nice and sharp. So now I turn it now I turn it around in the opposite direction and do the same thing. One Mississippi. One Mississippi. So, see how still that blade is? I don't move it. And I'm just lightly touching it to his head. I'm not pressing. The clipper's sharp enough. So now we have a sharp line, and it's just the width of the clipper blade. Right? Yeah, that's not hard. <clears throat> yeah, nothing to be nervous about. It's not your hair, right? <laughs> okay, so now we're going to take a little bit of shave gel. And we're going to shave, and we're going to use the razor. Yeah, we've got to get it closer. You don't want me to? I didn't know. Okay. Oh, this is the first class operation. Okay, so we lay it on there, nice and thick. And the nice thing about the gel is you can see it. Okay, and then well, you don't mind if I sneak in here so I can shave, do you? Okay. Okay, so then I'm just gonna, I'm just, I'm not, uh, I'm not rubbing the gel into his hair. I'm just combing the hair out of the way, in front and behind. Okay. What about our group over there? Everybody over there can't see. You wanna? You all wanna come up and see too, since everybody's in your way, or? <laughs> right. Okay. Now I'm gonna lean his head to the side. So now what I do is. I grip and I stretch. Okay, and then I just put it in one spot, and you, you don't you don't want to go too far, because then the line's going to be too. So there's no there's no wrist there's no wrist movement with this. It's just it's just your finger it's just my fingers. Okay, and I'm not pressing. I'm stre I'm stretching the skin, and that's making the hair pop out. How's that feel, Brian? Okay. Okay, so I have the blade at a uh, about a 45 degree angle, as flat as I can have it with it still cutting. Okay, that's, that's it. Nice and straight, right?
So the key is you have to really grip and stretch the skin. Because the skin, may, when you stretch, it makes the hair pop out, and then it's real, and then and then all you're doing is very lightly with your finger gliding the, gliding the, um, gliding the razor over. Um, does anybody want to? I'll take the blade out. Does anybody want to come up and just see what it feels like, without the blade in it? Okay. Okay. There's, there's no. I took the blade out, Brian. Let me let me just show you. So you, okay. The, the blade is the blade is out. Make sure that's okay. There. okay. Okay. So you're gonna hold it like this. Okay. You're gonna stretch, and just very lightly, barely touch it to a skin. Okay. okay. So, yep. This? Yep. Okay. So stretch. Like that. Yep. And just very lightly. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> Just. <laughs> no, she's never gonna do it. Go ahead. No guts, no glory. <laughs> yep, and just quick, quick movements with your finger. Yep. There you go. That's it. All right. Next. <laughs> no, like you mean, like you mean it. Hang on. Put your thumb up here. Grip it. Yep. Just palm his head like a basketball and stretch. Yep. That's how. This is how I learned how to shave without a without a razor in it. Just. Or, yep. Yep. That's the shave gel, and then the regular gel smells the same. Everything. All the products have the same fragrance in it. Except for the shampoo, it's got a mint fragrance. I can do the back of this back as well. How does it feel, Don? It's nice. It's nice. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah? It's nice. It's nice. Do you want to do a razor? It's meant to. Well, we can have okay. you. Um, we're doing, I'm doing. Oh, great. Terry and I are demoing like clipper and razor and everything. Oh, cool. We'll be doing hands on. I heard the back of the back. I have a few razors. I left you for it. So you guys will get up there and get. It's nice though because the gel in it almost has a grip to it. Kind of how And then, right with your thumb. Yep, thumb right there. Yep. And I see now when you take the trimmers and go back and forth, yeah. it gives you the space to use this, yep. right? Yeah, it gets it at both angles so you cut it close. You're welcome. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to style them. What I like to do is I like to start out with this particular um, hairstyle. What I like to do is put a little gel in first. So I don't use as much as I would use if I was just using gel. So this will give me the shape when I dry this in. So this gel is pretty thick, so you don't need a lot. So I put it in when the hair is uh, semi-damp, so it dilutes it a little bit. And then as I dry it, it's gonna, like, it'll give us the shape, and then we'll put the pomade in afterwards. So I'm just gonna use a vent brush, hair dryer, with a nozzle. So I dry everything back towards the center. And then on top what I like to do is get a little lift where the part is.
and then the front two. So even, though, even if it looks a little high, by the time you're done with the pomade and everything, it'll settle down just a little bit. hands on the other side. So you, you'll find through conversations that most guys don't know how to style their hair, so it's our job to teach, to teach that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use a, a pomade. Use the gel first to get the shape so we, we can dry it up because it wouldn't do that without, without any of the gel in there. And then, so then we'll take the pomade, which I like to put in when the hair is dry because it's water soluble. So you'll find that this pomade will rinse out pretty much before the shampoo even hits the hair, but it has a real strong hold. So I'm going to use about that, about that much. So you want to make sure you rub it in your hands really good. So we'll get it through mostly with your fingers right down to the roots and we'll push the sides down. And then what I'll do is I'll take the pick and then, uh, and then uh, comb. The pick will get, will get the, the uh, product through there. Okay, and then we can take the, uh, the regular comb, we'll go through it easier now. And then this will harden up like, this will harden up like gel. Okay. All right, so there it is. Thank you. But it wouldn't have been possible without Brian, so. <laughs> My work is done. <laughs> That's it. Your, your, your work is done. Can I ask you a question? You, sure, since, absolutely. Since you're not cutting hair like you normally cut with a mirror. Yes, it's harder. Could you explain how during the course of a haircut you use your mirror? Oh, I use my mirror the whole time. So wherever you're sitting, you notice how I'm, I'm spinning the chair so you can all see what I'm doing? So when I'm spinning the chair, every, everything that I do, I'm checking in the mirror to make sure it looks good in the mirror. So that's, that's another reason why I stand in one spot and just spin the chair. So I check my mirrors. And then I had, I had a, a one station where I was, and for those of you who have been in my shop, the one station in the corner where we have the station and we have the mirror on the wall. That was my favorite station because I had two mirrors. I could stand behind, I could look in this mirror, I could look in that mirror, I could spin them around and, and look in both mirrors. The only problem was I couldn't see what everybody was doing from that spot. So I had to move one chair over so I can see what all my barbers are doing. You know what I'm talking about, the one in the corner, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. All set. Yeah, all set. I appreciate it. Thank you very Thanks much. Okay, you got it. <clears throat> All right, so for Mike, I've been cutting Mike's hair for the last couple of years now, and actually used him as a model when he was a student. When was that, five years ago? A long time ago, six years ago? 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Why not? You're very successful now. What, the haircut or? <laughs> no, no, no. Certain people here. I remember that. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I forgot about that. I won't say it, but I, f I forgot about that. That's right. Okay, so. <laughs> now he's got platinum. <laughs> All right, let's see here. So we're going to find the part. So uh, for Mike, what, we're, what we do is we actually we leave the top quite a bit longer, and we do a real close, tight uh, two-finger low fade. So we have a lot of dimension to this haircut. And then, did you say we were cutting the part in, or? If you want to, you can. Okay. Those words always make me nervous if I want to. <laughs> if you <laughs> need to? Okay. 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 If you don't need to, I prefer not to. Okay. That's all I need all I needed to know. Okay, so a couple situations we have with Mike's hair. One on the right hand side where his part is. We were having a, a little trouble and when I say when I say we, probably me, what what to do in this section right here. Because he had this hair here that was going, we couldn't decide if it was going one way or the other, and I was afraid to taper it in too close, but it wound up just coming in too heavy and 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 st and sticking out on him when it grew in. So the, a couple of haircuts ago, we just decided to taper it in, and he had quite a bit more in uh, front there. So what we did is we moved the part just a little bit, and then these uh, few hairs in the front here, we tapered right in. So after an extensive consultation. <laughs> uh, the top he likes to keep longer, so we'll probably just dust it a little bit. And he has a pretty bad calic in the back there, so I usually stay away from that. Maybe every second or third haircut we cut that. He gets his haircut normally every three weeks. This is probably five or six. Four. Four. Oh, that's it? Okay. That's it. Oh. I'm supposed to see you first oh. So are we doing it, taking any off the top, or do you, you want to leave? Driving you. It is driving you nuts, okay. Okay, so same thing. I can judge this better. I still like to cut it this way, but I can judge it better and I can do it easier standing in front this way. But I want to make sure I leave that front long enough. So when we style his hair, he likes a matte finish. So. I usually use the same steps. We, we put the gel in first and style it, and then we use the paste, my shaping paste, afterwards. So as I get towards the back, I'm keeping that, cal that crown, the calic in mind, and I'm just not going to cut it. Got this wave thing going on here, huh? Yeah. yeah. What did your barber do to you last time? <laughs> we didn't touch it. <laughs> we only cut the sides. Oh, that's right. Okay, so my fingers are parallel to the floor. I'm using a traveling guide. And now I'm going to pick up the other side, do the same thing. He likes it longer on the top, so I'm just taking a little. And sometimes it's harder. Uh, not, not technically harder, just sometimes mentally it's just harder to just, when I know I'm going to do a bald fade on the side, or not bald fade, but a, a close fade on the sides to just take a, to just take a little bit off. Anybody else have a tough time just taking a, a little bit off? Yep. Yeah, so that's one of the things that you really have to get over and get good at, all of us, myself included, because you know, a lot of guys, we like to keep our haircut consistent, so it's every two weeks or every three weeks, so we're just taking a little bit off, but, you know, it makes, it makes a big difference. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little bit of point cutting in this corner here because it's really thick here. I prefer to do it over the comb, that way I, uh, I don't cut my finger. <laughs> there we 
we go. So that just breaks it up a little bit. So that stays back a little nicer without cutting it shorter. So now what I'm going to do before I start the, um, the fade is just on this side, I'm going to do some scissor over comb on this side and get it ready for the fade. The other side's not as heavy. So what I can see here. So I'm just being real careful because we, we were letting these hairs are just pretty much almost all the way grown out. So this hair here was part of the hair that was hanging down. So for about five or six haircuts, we've been letting that grow in so it would stay over. So you can see why scissor over comb is so important because real quickly we can just go in and kind of taper this out and get it ready for the clippers without making a big project out of it. Use the tip of the comb there, or I'm sorry, the tip of the scissors there. All right. So I'm going to start out with my three and three quarter blade, which is my half inch blade. Sure. Scissor over comb. Do you prefer to do that um, wet or dry? And why? Um, on Michael's hair, I prefer it dry because uh, his hair is so light in color, so I can see I can see every cut. Or or at the very least, just semi damp. Maybe I'll just spritz the comb and then comb through it, mm -hmm. um, because. Uh, his hair, when it's wet, it all sticks together, and I can't tell what it's going to do. Yeah, but if someone had thick, thick, coarse, curly hair, I mean, I would do it all scissor over comb, you know, right out of the sink. So, um, and then I don't know if you have a lot of any senior clients, like some of the guys with real fine white hair. I mean, you can't even you can't wet it down at all because it'll just it's like one piece of hair. So. All right, so now we're just going to take it up with the three and three quarter, and then we're going to fade them down real tight, just that two finger width around the edges. And I'm staying well below the, the, uh, the calic area there. So that way, if I do have to do some blending, I'm, I want to give myself about an inch or a finger width worth of room to blend. So if I go right to the calic and then have to blend it, then I'm cutting into the calic and then I'm, it's going to stick up. So I want to give myself just enough room to do some blending. Okay, now his hair is growing from from front to back, so that's why I'm coming against the grain. And now another trick that you can also do is if you don't, if you want to skip a blade. So if I don't want, if I want to take a step out and I don't want to go work through all four blades, so I'm, I'll skip the three eighths of an inch and go right to the quarter inch. If I tilt it up a little bit, it makes it a three eighths of an inch. So any blade that you have, so a quarter inch, I tilt it up, it makes it three eighths, and I can skip, I can skip a blade. So I can tilt it up and just uh, scoop it just a little bit and then I can flatten it out. So that's a little bit more of an advanced trick um, where you can actually skip a blade and not have to work through all your blades. It works better on hair, uh, lighter in color. The toughest fades you're going to have are, you know, uh, dark, dark black hair on light colored skin. And then you throw a few dents in there and uh, it, it makes it even worse. Okay, so tilt it up, right? We're going to use a little scooping motion while it's tilted up. Then we're going to flatten it out. So we just became a little bit more efficient. So we're not necessarily skipping a step. We're just uh, skipping that one blade. So now as I come around, as I'm working my way around, I'm doing the job of the three and a half and the two blade as I work my way around. So that just saved a little bit of time without cutting any faster. Thank you. 
So is there anybody not using detachable blade clippers now that can't wait to go out and get one and try using one? All right, so now we're going to go to the one and a half. And the reason why I don't want to skip a blade this time is because the one and a half is also my blending blade. So as I'm going up the sides with the one and a half, I'm also going to touch up a little bit of the blend here. So with blonde hair, when you cut it shorter around the edges, it always looks lighter than here. So you're usually going to have a little bit of blending to do. So now I'm just going to as I said before, with the tip of the teeth, and then just blend that. Because if I, if I go in with a thinning shear, I, I want to do this first and see if this does the trick before I go in with a thinning shear because I don't want to break up the hair too much. I don't want to take that thickness out because we do the way we style it, we do like to push it back. And if I take too much of the weight out, I won't be able to push it back. So see, and, and as I'm doing this, I'm working my way around. I'm always combing it to make sure. Uh, like Brian asked me earlier, normally as I'm combing it, I would be looking in the mirror. Okay, so see how that one trick, just that tip, that tip of the blade, that one trick. Okay, and then the next thing is I'm going to take my adjustable clipper and we're going to tighten them up around the edges. Use my taper comb. I have it all the way open in a one blade position and I'm going to tilt it up. And I'm going to use a scooping motion. But I'm going to slow it down because what I did was my one and a half is an eighth of an inch. I skipped a sixteenth of an inch blade. I went straight to my adjustable and I'm tilting it up. And as I'm slowly scooping it away, it's blending it in. Now this, this probably wouldn't work anywhere as near this well on, on jet black hair on light colored skin. But on um, Michael's color hair it works well. Then before I, I start spinning the chair, I'm going to close it halfway and keep it lower. I just opened it back up. There's a little dark spot there, so I'm going to do a little point cutting. Okay, I got that. So the bottom down here, we're going to just fade that right out to nothing. Now I'm going to close it all the way. And that takes care of the rest of our taper. Then we just have to clean up a little bit of the hair off the neck. So hopefully this has opened your eyes a little bit about starting from the top and working your way down that it's you know can be a lot easier. Because I don't really do a whole lot of blending if at all. Let's see, it looks a little darker there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up all the way into the one blade position. So if I had my mirror, I probably would have caught that when I had my one and a half blade on there. 
But that's the, the advantage of having a nice big comb. I can really slide that in there and I can see the hair from beneath. And I mean, that's, I got a big wide plane there without going off it. Okay, we got that there. I don't want to get too close to the, cow, the crown there. Okay. And then we just finish up on this side. Okay, now we're going to close it down halfway. So now we're going to go to our trimmer. And so what I like to do when someone hasn't shaven, I ask them if they're going to shave before I start, but no, or normally, especially if it's on the weekend, on a Saturday, most guys aren't, don't shave on the weekend or don't like to. So what I do is I just blend it into the beard pretty close, and then, you know, come Monday when they go back to work, if they're going to shave, then I let them shave. So I always ask, would you like it blended? Do you want me to shave it? If they do say yes, shave it. Then I tell them, you know, if I do shave it, you're going to have a stripe on the side of your face until you shave. But I always say something. Something else I learned the hard way, because I did, you know, I went, you know, chin parallel, lined it off, and did this, and the guy said I was growing, I was growing a beard. <laughs> like, <no. laughs> so um, that one only took me once to learn. <laughs> and if you get in the habit of it, because you know, right, how many haircuts do we do? So it's just second nature. Okay, it's time to do the sideburns and line off the sideburns, and you know, without even thinking, even if somebody does have a beard. So it's just a good good habit to get into so that, that you always ask. Okay, and then we're just going to shave up to it here. I mean, there's really not much to make a line because we faded it out to nothing. Then we're going to open them up. Brush them off. So that's the thing I like. So when you're more efficient with your hair cutting, then you could spend a, just then you could spend a little time on the style, which gives you a chance to talk about products a little bit, which gives you a chance to you know raise the ticket. So then what we'll do is we will um, actually we'll shave his neck first, and then we'll style his hair. Okay, so we start out with a little bit of shaving gel first as a pre-shave. And then uh, shaving lotion next. So even though it doesn't look like there's any hair on his neck, I mean, you, you can see, if you look real close, if anyone wants to come up, you can, see, you can see it on the razor. I can barely see what I'm shaving, but it makes a, huge, makes a huge difference when you finish the haircut off this way. Definitely get three to, three to five extra days of, you know, of the neck feeling smooth than just using the trimmer.
So what's, what's this called, the way I'm holding the razor? Close, has the word hand in it. <laughs> Everybody, anybody except Richard? <laughs> what's this grip called, the way I'm holding the razor? <laughs> okay, what's this grip called? Yep. Okay, so we got that. <laughs> so you have time to think. You got about 10 more seconds. So I switch from my backhand to, to my... Yep, I'm close. Somebody gets the gold star. I recognize the voice. <laughs> and then what you can do is just, at the end, just rub it right in. And then I'll take another just a little bit of the shave gel for an aftershave. Okay, so then I'm going to take a drop of gel and we're going to we're going to dry his hair. He likes to have um, he likes he likes his hair higher in front, so we're going to dry it higher in front, and then we're going to finish up with the paste because the paste will hold his hair up with a matte finish. Yes. Yep. Yeah, espe yeah, especially you know, with his hair to get to really get the height that he wants, we need the, the gel to thicken it up to get it to, to stand up. So it's either that or what I do is I just use the gel, but I use about an, uh, I use about a quarter of the bottle of gel <laughs> to get to get the Where is my... Forgot how wavy your hair is. <laughs> you never style it. That's true, I don't. I usually do it. This is tough. <laughs> Nobody styles my hair either. I always have to do it myself. Easier that way. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we're going to use the paste. So now the nice thing about this paste is it has a really strong hold, but it goes in like a cream. There's no clumping in your hands. There's no clumping in the hair. So when you rub it in your hands, it looks just like a cream. has a really strong hold so when you use it you got about a 15 to 20 second window to style it before it, before it holds It's close to the way you do it. So I'm sure it's not 100%, but. This way? This way? Yeah. OK. If you want it. Of course. Well, that's rule number one. How do you want your hair styled? <laughs> Which I didn't ask you. <laughs> Which I should have asked her. <laughs>
and I don't have a mirror. It's okay. Okay, I think I think you're right. It feels better. <laughs> All right, so now we'll spin we'll spin them around. So we got a real low fade that makes the top stand out with no with no lines and uh, minimal blending. We had to do some blending, but very very minimal. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate it.